Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Sam and today I'm going to be asking the question, are you scared to start your next painting? Let's get into it. So while I ramble on, you are going to be watching me paint my Dwarf Pirate, which is just a new portfolio piece, wanted to try something fun, kind of in the style of Blizzard. Um, hopefully it's going to look that way, so enjoy that while I talk about something completely different. Oh, and if you want to hear more about the process of the video that you're watching, drop a comment below and let me know because I can create a narration, re-release the video with a new narration talking about how I created that piece. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know below. And every time I say below, I'm pointing for some reason. You can't see that. It's all good. So it may sound really strange to someone that doesn't experience this but I have spent years being petrified to start the next painting and I think a lot of artists view this as artist block so you start off with a white canvas and you're a bit apprehensive about laying down a brush stroke or starting the piece or you're not sure what to start with and for me it really did boil down to a realization that I was kind of scared to start it and there were several reasons why that's the case and I'm going to talk about a lot of them today. So before I get into it, the reason I'm doing this video is because I don't feel like too many artists talk about the emotional side or the toll it takes on people trying to become a professional. There are some people that do, Adam Duff videos are absolutely amazing, I'm sure you've heard of him. Uh, that's most of his content now is, is talking about his experiences as an artist, not so much how to produce the art. And I think it's really necessary. And I touched on it slightly with one of my last videos, basically mentioning to try and have fun with it, because if you're not enjoying it, what's the point? And people really responded to that. And it made me realize I, I think I should do this video. So getting straight to it, I think one of the biggest problems I have suffered with over the years, and I've seen other artists suffer with as well, is connecting your self-worth with your art. Now what I mean by that is there being no dividing line between your profession and your personal life, and if your art is good or bad, then your self-worth is good or bad. So if I am having a, a terrible week and I cannot draw, cannot paint, and my art's really bad, or in my eyes I view it as really bad, then I also view myself as a, a terrible person. They um, align with each other, and I think that's a terrible thing to do. I think we need to separate ourselves from our art to a certain extent. I think often that's why people really struggle to have critiques because they take it so personally, they take things as a personal attack. And everyone tells you you need to have a professional mindset with critiques, as long as they're useful, bearing in mind. But if someone gives you honest, fair critiques that is telling you you need to focus in these areas, you need to not take that personally. And if you've connected your self-worth with your art, you just won't be able to do that. Or at least you'll find it really difficult to do that, because it will feel like a personal attack. Now, as I've said, I've I've struggled with this um, my entire life. I still struggle with it now. I'm getting better. As a professional, you have to. There's, I, I definitely have a disconnect with some of my art now. And it does vary piece to piece and process to process. So it, it can even vary day to day. I can be completely fine one day with someone critiquing my work and not another day. And it is because I'm, on that day, if I'm having a negative day, I may be connecting myself with, with my art. If I think my art's rubbish, then I'm a rubbish human being and I shouldn't be around. That's no way to live. And I, and I imagine, even if you feel this way, when you hear me say it out loud, it probably sounds ridiculous. I'm sure there'll be many artists out there that have never felt this, and that's amazing. That's the way we all want to be. But if you, if you do suffer with this, and you have a mindset of there's no separation between your art and yourself and you only view yourself as an artist I think there's there might be an issue there 
and it might be something that you need to address. Obviously, if, if, you're, if you're only getting positive experiences out of it, then great. Um, I'm not going to tell anyone how to live, but if you suffer with anxiety or depression and you also do this, then there needs to be change. And that is a mindset change. Now that mindset will need to be you separating your art and viewing it as a job, knowing that everyone makes mistakes, you are learning, you are trying to improve, and your self-worth should never be affected. You are, at the end of the day, you're a human being that, that deserves to be here no matter if you're a good artist or not. Because you wouldn't judge someone that's never painted in their life, you wouldn't connect their self-worth with their art if they've never painted. So why do it to yourself? I think the general mindset for me was always I wasn't learning fast enough and I'd spent so much time on art and I wasn't really getting anywhere and that's where I viewed myself as a, a bit of a waste of space over the years especially there was a there was a period where I had finished uni and I wasn't good enough to get a job uh, that was a really dark time for me and I really struggled with that I really battled with it and I just I, I put it in a creative way of working really hard but my self-worth was really low. I was really unhappy with myself and I just felt like I hadn't worked hard enough and I didn't deserve a job. So if, if this is ringing any bells with anyone, definitely try, try, to, uh, tr try to change that. Now obviously I'm no, I'm no expert in talking about, I've mentioned anxiety and depression. If you are struggling with those as well, that is obviously not just art you, you need to seek professional help i won't say any, any more on that as i said i'm not a professional in that regard but just regarding the art uh, make sure you are not connecting your self-worth with your art i cannot say that enough to move on from that point one of the main reasons you might be scared of starting a new painting or fearful of what might happen is because you haven't established a process and you don't know what's going to happen. So let's say all you have drawn are cats. You haven't drawn anything else except cats and you've drawn a million cats. Every different angle, every different colour, every different gesture, every different movement, you've done it all. Now if someone hires you to draw a cat you'll probably feel great, you'll feel really confident, you know you can do it. Let's say another client comes up to you and says, I want you to draw a dog. Well, you're probably going to be scared of doing that because you've never done it before. So it's a lack of a process, a lack of understanding of how to create that dog image that's causing the fear. So obviously you cannot draw everything there's no artist in the world that has experience drawing everything but there are artists that have or professional artists most professional artists you would hope have a process to create anything because they are reliant on a process they know that works i've said process a lot i'm really sorry guys so what i mean by this for me as an example recently i've started getting into 3d now i haven't always done 3d but from my channel you'd presume i always have but I've started getting into 3D and it quickly established a process of removing problems with perspective, value ranges, anatomy even, uh, general lighting setups. It removes all those problems. So they are ticked off my list. I don't have to worry about them. And if you know as an artist that they are, they're difficult things to create. So if you can guarantee those things, it makes the whole process easier, which is why I love 3D, which is why on the YouTube channel I've been talking a lot about 3D, because it removes a lot of the really difficult parts if you do it right. But the process doesn't have to be one way. I can't tell you your perfect, perfect process because there isn't one. You need to find it yourself. I've painted with a lasso tool in the past, which worked really well for me for doing certain things that that might not work for other people. It's about you replicating the painting process until you've done it so often that you know the outcomes before you've done it. So if you're scared, 
and a bit fearful starting, it's probably because you haven't done that particular process enough to know what's going to happen or the steps that you need to take. I imagine it's a bit like driving a car. I've been driving a car now for 10 years or something like that and I don't even have to think about it anymore. You jump in the car and you drive off. But if you've never, let's say an alien came down and said, you've got to drive this car, they wouldn't know how to unlock the car, they wouldn't know how to get in, they wouldn't know what pedal does what, they wouldn't know what all the buttons do. But you take these things for granted because you've done it so many times. So it's repetition. If you can repeat the painting process over and over and over, and as long as that process is successful, or you understand what the problems are, then you're onto a winner and you'll start gaining confidence. So my biggest recommendation, I'm sorry if this is really long winded, but my biggest recommendation if you do lack a process and you are a bit scared of it, is to write down what you're afraid of, practice those things and try to write a step by step guide of how to paint. So view it purely um, analytically I guess so step one might be line drawing step two might be filling in the line drawing with block shapes step three might be shadows step four might be highlights and really try to break it down that way because I see a lot of artists they don't have a process but they, they over complicate things because they see other artists that re have a complicated process because they're very good artists and they try to replicate it so I see a lot of artists pushing paint around the canvas, not really knowing what they're doing, but they're just liking that they're creating brush strokes. I see artists using photos when they haven't established a value range. Those kind of issues are from not establishing a process. So I've mentioned this over and over and over on this channel. You really need to analyze and work out what is wrong with your process and that's how you improve. Don't just look at the final outcome analyze every step along the way. So the next one is kind of twofold. It's the fear of failure and always feeling like you're working on a portfolio piece. So for me, I really struggled when I finished a university and I wanted a job, but realistically I wasn't good enough and I had several friends at university that were good enough and I'm, I'm very competitive and I naturally compared myself to them and again it went back to the self-worth with art I felt like I was a rubbish human being for not being as good as them so my mind went straight to well I'm going to work frantically to produce a portfolio well the issue is I wasn't good enough so my focus should have been on improving and obviously you do improve while you're working on portfolio pieces, but not at the same rate as dedicated practice. So I was creating character pieces and they weren't good enough. So I'd create one and I'd create another one and I'd create another one and then I'd hate them all. And I'd hate every part of the process. At that point, to be honest with you, I was just hating life. And it was a horrible experience because rather than focusing on improving and getting some satisfaction that I know I'm improving by practicing, I was just banging my head against a brick wall trying to improve by, by creating a piece not being good enough, creating a piece not being good enough. And I wasn't really analyzing what was wrong. I was just creating new pieces. It was too much to focus on. I, I needed to improve everything. I needed to improve my anatomy. I needed to improve perspective value ranges, colour, and when you need to improve everything, you can't do that in one painting. So if you can't do it in one painting, you know that next painting is going to be a failure, because something is going to be wrong with it. You're going to have, let's say you, you manage to fix the value ranges on your next painting, but you still struggle with everything else, well you know the perspective, the composition, the anatomy are all going to be rubbish, and if that is the case, then your value ranges are not going to save it. And that was the process I was in. I was creating new pieces and I kept just binning them. And obviously this is natural as you improve portfolio pieces, you end up taking them out. So if I find every year 
um, a piece from a year ago I tend to, to remove. That's my kind of rate and the better I get the slower it gets. So if you're just starting off you might be replacing your portfolio pieces every three months because you're just improving that fast which is great. And if you're in that situation and you're if you're sitting there now going oh my god yeah I'm so frustrated with my portfolio no, nothing looks good then you know you're not ready for a portfolio yet focus on studies do 20 minute studies on the things that you need to practice most and you'll you'll start to get a satisfaction out of improving and you'll feel accomplished because you can look back on a day's work and you'll have loads of 20 minute studies which is awesome rather than half of a bad piece that you know isn't going to be good enough so that's one thing the other thing as i mentioned earlier was the fear fear of failure now you naturally might be depending on your temperament you might be more afraid of failing than someone else i myself am petrified of it but it dwindles the less you fail now i know that sounds almost like an oxymoron but what I would recommend is trying to guarantee a win. So if you can basically not fail, find a way to not fail, then you're cheating the system, right? Like I said, with that portfolio um, situation I was talking about a second ago, if you are studying, you cannot fail a study. If you do a 20 minute study and you hate it, then all you have to do is analyze what you did wrong and then you've learned something then that study has been worthwhile. You do not have to produce good pieces when you are practicing. You do have to produce good pieces when you're creating a portfolio. So if you create study after study after study, when you come to create your portfolio pieces, you'll have confidence and you'll have a backlog of work and information to rely on to produce the next piece. If you don't have enough information and you don't have enough pieces in your backlog to rely on, it will feel like you're going to fail and there'll be a, a fear of it. And I think that's what I've suffered with for the longest time. So if you're worried you're going to fail, bearing in mind also, as a side note, failing is absolutely fine. If you're working at home and you're working on portfolio pieces and you fail and, it's, and you don't like it, that's fine. It's just, especially if you're working digitally, you haven't lost anything. No, all you've lost is time. What you need to focus on, if you keep doing that, like I did when I was younger, if you keep failing and not, and you don't learn from it, then that time builds up. And it's not so much the fact that you're losing anything, it's the fact that you're probably unhappy, at least I was. If you're unhappy, then that's what needs to change. So moving on, the next point I'm going to make is a grey area and useful for some, maybe not for others, and take it with a pinch of salt because I hate telling people how to do a certain thing a certain way. I, I think everyone can find their own way, but it's a recommendation. So if you find it useful, then great. If you, if you think it's wrong, okay, that's great too. The recommendation I would say is start simple and try to stay within your skill limit to a certain extent so what i mean by this is if you cannot create a painting with one character with suitable lighting a good composition good anatomy then do not try to paint five characters because it just gets harder those paintings i know they look amazing and and this is why I meant by take it with a pinch of salt is that if you really enjoy doing that then great just go for it but if you want to learn quicker I'd recommend focusing on, on the one character because mainly because you can churn them out faster and if you're talking about simplicity maybe you start without a background so maybe you just focus on even drawing the anatomy and then if you want to step up from that and you feel like you can draw the anatomy pretty well, the step up from that is maybe maybe adding values, lighting and colour. And then if you feel comfortable doing that, putting them in a scene and then making the poses more difficult and then adding more characters or changing the lighting situation to make it more difficult. And maybe you've got multiple lights, something like that. 
but I see so many artists start really complex and they don't analyze the process. I mean, it's so easy to do. You get excited, you get carried away. Before you know it, you're, you're you know, rendering someone's foot and you're spending hours trying to get this foot right and in this giant piece that you think is going to be your masterpiece. But in reality, your skill level just might not be there yet. It's something to bear in mind. It's a, it's a general idea that I've I've realised over the years. If I start off simple, I can always become I can always make it more complicated as I go on. It's hard to do the reverse. Start simple, and you'll find it will give you confidence. If you are someone like me who has struggled with confidence in your painting, you are scared to start new pieces. You procrastinate a lot because you don't want to start it. You have a fear of failing the piece. Why wouldn't you make it easier? Start easier, get a win out of it. Because, I mean, you guys must have felt this when you when you create a piece that you actually kind of like. Um, I know, crazy, right? You might actually like a painting, but if you have a piece that you actually like, it makes you, it encourages you to do the next one. It makes you want to do the next one. And that's what it's all about. This is what I was talking about in the last video. You're meant to be doing art because that somewhere along the line you've enjoyed it and you should be enjoying it and if you're petrified to do something wrong then you're not enjoying it how can you enjoy that so it's all about finding ways to improve and enjoy the process and give yourself a little bit of confidence and a pat on the back to say hey I did that I've created that piece let's move on maybe with something slightly more complicated so that is where we're going to leave this video. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's been quite informal, I guess, as all my videos are, me just rambling on. But I would love to hear how you guys feel. I'd like to know if people felt the same way as me over the years, if this will help. I'm sure there are people that have felt the same way as me. I can't be the only one. There might, there'll probably be people that listen that think, why, why would you be scared to start a painting? That's ridiculous. And I get it, it it's irrational. But like I said, when you've connected your self-worth with your ability, then that's it's hard to deal with sometimes. So I hope there's someone out there that hears this and it makes them think about changing and realizing that it's just art at the end of the day. You're not saving anyone's life. You know, hopefully you can get a good career out of it and enjoy it. You don't need to put pressure on yourself to be brilliant at this point. It's not a race. There are jobs out there for everyone. If you're dedicated and you enjoy it and you keep going, then you will succeed. My view is even if it takes you 50 years to get there, try to enjoy the process. Because I've spent years, I mean, this is a different topic, but I've spent years thinking about the next stage. Oh, I'm going to, I'll enjoy life next year because next year I'll be a lot better. You can't live like that. You need, you need to enjoy the present. So find a way to enjoy art hope this video has helped and let me know in the comments what you think as always uh, i thank you guys so much my subscribe count's starting to go up it's it's getting better obviously i don't have um you know that many but i, I really do appreciate everyone that has subscribed if you haven't subscribed already please do if you like my content feel free to like or dislike the video depending on how you feel and hit the notification bell if you want to be updated when I release a video. So thank you guys, I appreciate you watching and I'll catch you in the next one.